fmtraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. I'm here to talk about the wonderful FileMaker platform with Christian Schmidt. Uh, Christian is an absolutely wonderful um, FileMaker plugin developer. He makes the Monkey Bread plugin, which he, we have had, I think last Christian said we had 42 videos, but I think we're over that now. Uh, we have a lot of videos on it because it does so much. It does an absolutely ridiculous amount of stuff. Uh, it makes everything from developing easier uh, by highlighting code in specific ways. Like the other day I was using the search function that MBS has in the script search to, there was some script that we need to update the parameter on, but it's being used like in like 15 to 20 other scripts. It's just easy to have, type in the script title, have it highlight so we could just see with a quick skim which scripts are using, which ones weren't. If the yellow highlight showed up, then it was being used. Fun stuff like that makes development so much easier. And also allows you, frankly, to do things at the FileMaker platform you couldn't do otherwise. There is a free version and a paid version, so you should definitely, at the very least, go download the free version and check it out at monkeybreadsoftware.com or .de. Let's talk about our live stream training schedule fast, and we'll get into it. So, today we're doing uh, the 14.1 preview. Uh, Christian Schmitz updates this constantly, all the time, with new features. So, the 14, we're going to be talking about features that are coming out soon. Friday will be a PayPal sample file discussion. Um, integrating PayPal into the FileMaker, your FileMaker database is a pretty common ask. We have a pre-done sample file for it, but it gets updated as the API changes. I think we're pretty good. Christian, what are we doing today? Yeah, today I want to show you things I'm working on for the next release. She's always excited. So next release is coming in uh, March. Mm -hmm. So as we release every two months and have a few new things, and so it's time to show you a few things and then decide um, where I may need to fine tune something. If if you guys have ideas, comments, maybe we have a few new things coming. So I got the the release notes here uh, already uh, sorted, so we can go through. Uh, things are, are changed. So, but let's start with something simple. Um, there's example here to format our formula. So you may know that, uh, copy copy this, if you have a calculation in FileMaker, either in the data viewer mm -hmm. here uh, or in a script step, you can always uh, use here our buttons on the bottom. So maybe repeat it. The first one is the syntax checks. So I would uh, say the Calculation is okay. Probably it doesn't. So the format button. Maybe I make a mistake here. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe let's go back to the script workspace. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing that we uh, find the box on. So we have a bug here. It doesn't show me here the result. But it can format the calculation, it can run it. Yeah, it can run it, and the check doesn't give me the result. Okay, then uh, we can add um, table occurrences or remove them if needed. Oh, okay. So when you calculate here, uh, when you format the calculation, mm -hmm. we also can do a compact style, which makes it as small as possible. This could be helpful if uh, you have to fight with the limit of 30,000 characters, but otherwise uh, we usually make a, the more verbose style. So, and you can do the same um, in code. So we have a function for this here, format calculation. So if you make any add-on tool for FileMaker where you have calculation texts, mm -hmm. you can use our function here to perform the same formatting as uh, the plugin does in the user interface. And currently we have one flag here for do the compact output. Uh, compact output is a little bit clever. So it uh, knows that uh, a comment here, test, uh, may need to stay there. So there must be a return after the test. So this is, stays a valid comment because if you would do this, uh, we would break the calculation. And because this format button uh, can have the uh, the option key to get the compact style. We got a few new functions. So we got here remote control is alt key down, which gives you an idea if the 
Alt key or Option key is down. I named it Alt key, where we usually refer it to as an alternative option key here. Mm -hmm. um, other people may prefer uh, the other names. And then I also got you uh, Shift key, uh, Function key, Control key, Command key, or Windows key. And Caps Lock also useful sometimes. Like if you ask someone for password, you may want to check this. So we could have here something like you are you're trying to enter something. We could tell you that the the caps lock key is down. So if you have a question, please stop me. But so otherwise, uh, I have a question. Maybe I'm not understanding totally. So the yeah. formatting. Is that formatting calculations inside of a calculation field, or could you do it on like a layout calculation object? Click the format button, have like the layout calculation object reformat. Oh, okay, or... let's let's say let's say. So you would have a layout calculation, so and put it in. So yeah, that's a big calculation. Now when we edit the calculation, we can here use. Ah, compact style it. if you want. And then we have the compact style here. And whenever you edit it again, you can just say here, give me the expanded style. Got it. Okay. So it has access to the little button, so you don't need to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. We got uh last error detail added. So uh in the plugin we have this nice thing that we highlight uh the get functions as mm -hmm. a documentation. So let's say variable. Specify and you say here get uh, last error detail. And whenever you type something here, you see we make it a clickable link. So I can click on this and go to the documentation right away. Of course, for a lot of get functions, I don't know what, what the return value is. Like, um, let's see, get functions here. So let's just say, you have one of the functions returning a number. Let's say, what could it be? Something simple like the platform, is it? Not. So system platform returns your number. Mm -hmm. Which number is what? I mean, we, we oh. learn it all for, for tests. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, otherwise, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you know that there's a minus for the two. What? I am conf I didn't that would never have occurred to me. I, if I saw a negative two hop up from that calculation, I would be so concerned. <laughs> okay, so uh, whenever you type a get calculation, uh, mm -hmm. get function, you get this link. And whenever Clarence adds new functions, I need to add them to my list and uh, look up the the help page so I can link them. Mm -hmm. And you turn it on uh, here somewhere. Is it up towards Let's the top? See. Underneath oh. reset colors, or am I? That's no, comment links. So uh, here is with links. There you go. This is calculation to links and the documentation, which is also for the get functions. Whenever class adds a new function, I have to adapt. And whenever class releases a new plugin SDK, I will download it and will rebuild the plugin using the new SDK. So let's see what else do we have. Uh, we have a statistics function for pictures. As you may imagine, someone asked for it. So let's just go here and say uh, graphics magic. You may want to, to do picture things. Like mm -hmm. you may want to rotate a picture, you want to frame it or enhance it, make it gray, grayscale or black and white, whatever. Save it to a different format, and we now got a function to. Oh, well, it's what maybe script. Yeah, here we have a lot of scripts to do things, like making a grayscale image. And I just make a copy here, and let's say we we want to use the new statistic functions. Oops. So I just put it in here. And then let's say we just show it in a dialog. Result. So the statistic function will tell us how 
yeah, some statistics about what's in the picture. So we get for all the channels, red, green, blue, and uh, transparency. Mm -hmm. We get values like the maximum, so full color, minimum color, uh, mean color, standard deviation variance. So you could know what uh, the coloring of the picture is. Like in this case, uh, there is no um, mask, so no transparency. So this is all zero. But you can see this picture has a full spectrum of colors for blue, but for green, there are a few dark shades missing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So some people can need that for doing some image analysis. Which but most people just use the graphics magic functions to convert, like you get various picture formats and uh, you need them all to be JPEG or you need to scale the pictures to a size or crop them or maybe add a frame and put them up on the wall. Or maybe, <laughs> you know, people do things with pictures. Mm -hmm. So let's take another thing we could do. Oh, debugger tool tips. Yeah, that's, oh, let's go back here. Let's just run the script here and say, and we are in the debugger. So I'm usually have to go to the data viewer and see what's the value, mm -hmm. but I'm lazy. So I move mouse over it. <sighs> so it shows that. So that's awesome. Fields and variables. And I think what was new is uh, that we improved our detection of empty variables. So if I go over the image here, and it will just tell me it's an empty value. So it doesn't confuse you by showing you that some text and then has no value. So people get confused about that. But otherwise, this is very useful. Let's use the type and the value which can also help to see uh, whether something is text or not text. Like um, you always have this, so let's say A is one, two, three, four. Let's see B as, as a text. Mm -hmm. So if you are on this in the debugger and you would go through the, through the list and you would see, oh, yeah, those mm -hmm. one, two, three, four. But if you would sort by this, uh, you may wonder why the sorting is not correct. Mm -hmm. And with the plugin, you can just point on it and it says here, this is text and this is number. So can be I did useful. not know it could do this. This is really cool. <laughs> I know that you've just improved it and now you're feeling all these cool improvements, but that I didn't know it could do that. So what else did we do? Um, yeah, we got this um, actions for Dyna PDF to go mm -hmm. to embedded containers. We had that yesterday. Yes. Um, we also got the parser. Do I have a parser example? Um, let's see. Dyna PDF. So I could, of course, show you again the. If someone wants to see it, I could show you again the embedded attachments. But let me just see if we have, oh yeah, there's a parser example, I think. Oh, neat. Is it the parser example? Let me just see. Uh, yeah, this does a parser thing. Mm -hmm. So we got a new feature uh, for selection text. So we can basically ask uh, on the PDF for every uh, letter where it is and get the coordinates. Yeah, PDF yeah. one. So we can just uh, do a search on place. Uh, let's see. Dyna PDF is a te text research. There are a lot. So we see test, 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 test. <laughs> um, yeah. With uh, we can search and delete text and do a lot of wonderful things. And new is that when we find something, we can ask uh, for what text we found. So you can exactly know what text you found. Let's me just add here a dialog box maybe and say um, MBS dialog PDF parser awesome. election text. 
Right, that's, and we can show the bounds where we found it. Mm -hmm. So you may want to know. Yeah. Meta there. Oh, um, sometimes auto completion is too aggressive. <laughs> Found something. So let's see. We run it at debugger, save. So it found the word data PDF as its coordinates. Right. Oh, did I stop it? Where's my PDF? Oh, I'm search mode. Uh, exit search mode. Yeah. So again, so mm -hmm. so we get all the different coordinates. You see the there's sometimes only one one number changing. Mm -hmm. So so okay. this can help people to find and get exactly which text was found. Especially since Dana PDF can tell us about all the letters uh, on the PDF. So should I do that? Maybe. I yeah. What do you mean by all the letters? Out of curiosity. Yeah, just uh, let's let's make a little table um, for letters. So let's see. Um, we have some text. We have a bounding box. Let's see, let so table with letters. So let's see, we make a copy of the script. We say here, um, we want to pause mid enable text selection. Yeah. Uh, we make a search, and for the search, we say uh, match always, which basically says uh, it matches all, all letters. No, I can't make a custom. Thing here, uh, but I can do our uh, insert script step. So let's say this is BS FM insert record. Like I want to make records, I don't want to code it all at FileMaker. So I just use the plugin and say here yeah, text is, I want to sneak at how the fields are named. So MBS now PDF browser selection text. I ask it to take PDF. And then this is the first column. The second is a B box. And we put in a big box. And that's all. Say. Oh, I need to, yeah, continue. I need a text here. Yeah, just run it. So it's finished. And now let's show the table here. And you see we have every letter. Wow. In the PDF and got the exact bounding box where to find it. So I'm in could... Germany, so we have comma, but otherwise. Got it. So that way you would actually know the location, the letters that it's telling you. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this parlor is awesome. It can find rotated text and rotated? tell you exactly where it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And here we, we replaced all the text. With... Oh, did we replace it? Oh, yeah. I had the replacement in. So it put, it put test over each text piece. <laughs> <laughs> Not very useful, but uh, that's cool to yeah. see. And it busted that out in like only a couple seconds. So, yeah. Oh, Dana PDF is very fast. Um, I think we saw that yesterday when we made the book. Yes. Uh, I have a question related to that briefly, yeah. real fast. Um, can Dana PDF export into ePublish or whatever that extent? There's a specific type of file for publishing. Yeah, EPUB. Yeah. Uh, but that's basically a text file. I think it's XML. Mm -hmm. So you could use our XML functions to build such a file if you want. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, of course. But we don't have an EPUB example. Got it. I was just curious if I could go figure that out. So. So, um, let's book function.
So some people like to show somewhere in the user interface at some point a uh, box to pick something. Mm -hmm. We have this nice dialog here, and I can just double click Malta. And I thought this would be convenient. But well, I have users, and they told me we urgently need a function to disable this. So we got a function set close dialog on double click. So if you have a need to show this box, um, mm. decide whether you want to disable it, uh, I don't know, close it with a double click, you can use a function to disable it. So I can double click as much as I want. Nothing is happening. But the most convenient thing about this list box is that you can just show it in a calculation at any time. How do you mean? That sounds cool, but I'm not quite processing. Uh, let's see. I, but we have some an example here. Uh, let's see. Uh, show with show dialog. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, it doesn't do it in a thing, but let's see. We have this snippet thing. Yeah. So here's a calculation mm -hmm. to run on a hotkey. And it will just do a let statement to run all the list dialog commands to show a list box. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, the plugin can be invoked anywhere. And uh, yeah, if you do it wrong, of course, block yourself might like if you put it in a layout calculation to show a list box every time the layout is shown then you could get in an endless loop <laughs> so let's see what else do we have um there was an improvement to auto completion oh, yes, so let's see feature. you have uh export was it field contents so people complained about not being able to use our variable auto completion here. And it's a trick here. Yeah, it does work. So if you define a path somewhere, test PDF. So if you define a path and you go into this dialog to actually pick the output path and type in a variable here, uh, it's not auto completion uh, by itself because uh, this is a different type of, of box here. This this text view is a different type, which mm -hmm. doesn't get our auto completion by default. Uh, but uh, because it's a dialogue. So so the trick to invoke it is uh, option escape. Oh, got it. Okay. So you, you have to use a different option escape as the, uh, the shortcut here. Yeah, well. And then it go. auto completes. So I had to find this somewhere down in, in Apple's documentation. You have it uh, that you need to actually press this combination for auto completion because otherwise it would just automatically auto complete. Or you would have, I think in older versions, you would have something like F5 or there are different key combinations over the years. Mm -hmm. so, Got it. Okay. Didn't even know that was a shortcut. That was, uh, Auto completion uh, specific output file. Yeah. So if you find a dialog where you think it's useful to have auto completion and it's not there, please let me know. Another thing where people complained about is uh, that we have dialogs like this one where the plugin did syntax coloring for the fields here. And I disabled that now. So if you see a dialogue where the plugin is doing something and it shouldn't do it, please let me know. <laughs> so this 12.0 is no longer purple because it's no longer no longer colorized by the plugin, which could be annoying for some people. And now it's maybe time to show you one of the bigger new features, mm -hmm. the overlay. That sounds cool. <laughs> That's it.
Imagine that you can show a window anywhere on the screen and you provide the whole content of the window with a picture, like this one. What? Just... So as you see, I put in an effect. So it's it's transparent if you, so you can see so a little bit. And when you move the mouse over it, it becomes opaque. So opaque, uh, yeah. So and I can move it. So <laughs> you may ask, how do we do that? Yes. So we have a new function overlay create. We create it. Then we set some parameters, like we set a frame. This is a position on screen. The default here was a uh, hundred pixel from top, a hundred pixel from the left. Mm -hmm. And the size is 200 by 200. Let me put in a picture. And the picture is coming from a container. And we make it visible, because once you have a frame, an image, you actually can show it. But you can also keep it hidden until you need it later. Then we have this option to allow move moving by the window background. Mm -hmm. uh, we turn the alpha channel uh, on to here 80%. And then we add some triggers. So we have a mouse click trigger. OK, click it. You clicked here. Yeah. Uh, mouse enter, mouse exit trigger. Clicked again. So the mouse click trigger, mm -hmm. which runs when you click on it, but you don't move it. So uh, it's just a script getting called when you click on it. And mm -hmm. mouse enter, in this case, uh, I'll, allows you to know that you move the mouse over it. So we change here the alpha to make it uh, fully visible. Mm -hmm. And when you move out of it, we turn it back to 80%. Got it. So <laughs> you can use this overlays for a ton of things. Like I had a blog post uh, here, like a splash screen. Your solution opens, you show maybe a screen like this one. So it just fades in. Show something fades out. Could be a splash screen on the start of the solution to show uh, the company logo, maybe like like you know when you launch Photoshop or so. Uh, mm -hmm. They do it. Uh, you can provide custom navigation. Like we could have this be a menu, a floating menu, and you could click on on it to trigger to trigger commands. That's cool. Uh, it's also for, for tutorials. Like if someone makes a video or makes a tutorial <laughs> I mean you may so so yeah click this button so it turns the button red uh and you click the button yeah so in this case we make an overlay and we ask file maker where is the button uh, let me make a picture here. We use our graphic magic functions to make a picture of, uh, you know, this red thing. Mm -hmm. So we make a round rectangle about the right size. And here, red color with transparent background, line with five, turn the rectangle, and then make a PNG. And uh, then we create the overlay and position the overlay. Um, so it's a little bit left and top of the button because the overlay is bigger than the button. Mm -hmm. But in the picture, we make it uh, not movable. We make it visible. And then here we use schedule functions to hide it after five seconds by releasing it. So we create it. We let the script end. And uh, yeah, and then wait for it to go away. So I have a quick question. Will this hang out if you make, is there a way to make it hang out between layouts? Like if you're hopping between different layouts? So for the custom navigation, like you suggested, if I can yeah, have it. Yeah, well, it stays. If you if you switch the layout, uh, this mm -hmm. will stay, absolutely. You can move the window behind it. You can make a new window. Farmiga doesn't know about it. <laughs> so it's not going Farmiga to attempt to get know. rid of it for you if you haven't coded it to leave. Got it. Yeah. Then uh, it's also useful as a banner. Like you may say you make an action and you want to show a banner for a few seconds that something happened, mm -hmm. like as a confirmation, which is here. Again, we draw the banner 
with whatever text you like. Oh, here. Overlay, overlay is cool. Just run it again. And uh, this overlay goes over all our windows. That's we draw the, the graphics here. Yeah. That's extremely oh. cool. Oh, someone is asking about Windows. Uh, let's switch to Windows. Let's open it. This is Mac. That's Mac Windows. And this is on Windows. <laughs> yeah, this feature didn't show up last year because, well, Windows was an extra step to do. Uh. So, and iOS, uh, not yet. I'm not sure if... Uh, how useful this would be on iOS, especially since you need the iOS SDK to use the plugin. So uh, uh, if someone convinced me that uh, they can make use of it on iOS, sure, tell me. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, you can have it all on Windows too. So, and what's also nice, uh, let's go back to Mac. Uh, we got here hotkeys. So this example allows you to place, uh, to run a script to place a star. So. You can just use the mouse position to place something on the screen. <laughs> oh, let's do it again. And, oh, same thing on Windows. Oh, yeah, you see the <laughs> Mac, the Mac ones. Let me go back to File Maker here, release all. And on Windows, we can use again star. Don't you see? We make a lot of stars. That... So another thing. Uh, no, I'm just saying it's extremely cool. Yeah, Can I thought about what could I do for our demo. <laughs> Another thing we had idea was, how about uh, some measurement help? So let's say I need to measure this box so I can make a line there and a line there. So And it'll stay when you go back to layout mode and everything jumps around. And... Yeah, yeah. It's just, a, it's a window with a high of, I think, one or two pixels. Mm -hmm. So we can... Maybe take a look on the scripts behind that. Also on Windows, uh, because the Windows people love to also have a few lines. <laughs> so, let's see. So, how does it work? First, placing a star is simply we have function to give you the current mouse position. Mm -hmm. Then we create one and we put in the star image. The position is here made near the mouse cursor. You can move them. Oh, you can move them. Okay. Oh, no, ignore mouse events. So the thing is, I can uh, click through it. So here, uh, so I can click the button because this is a, a thing, ignore mouse events. And make it visible. And topmost is also a nice thing. Um, you can actually decide whether uh, it, it stays on top of everything or if it can go behind another window. Mm-hmm. So we keep the stars topmost. Got it. And for the line, well, we actually draw a red line. See a one pixel high, put it in a container, and then make an overlay with also the high of one point. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's our line. Vertical line is basically the same, just here with and uh, one swapped for one and high. So, yeah. So, this is kind of a maybe silly question, but could you have it so it grabs information out of a field to put on top of like the little overlay? Like, oh, I have this number that I need to memorize, but I don't want to swap between FileMaker and the place I'm entering it a bajillion times. So, I overlay a little sticky note with the information out of it. Yeah, sure. You could do that. You could also have uh, the other thing with. Uh, Showing phone numbers, that's something uh, people like to do. Mm. Like if you have a, if you have a field, you need a field, uh, phone, you have a phone number and some solution, maybe a CRM. So we have a phone number mm -hmm. and now we may want to just show this phone number on screen for your call. So you could have a, uh, a script like here or, or, or a banner one and just show the phone number. Ah! And uh, not so quickly, of course, uh, because <laughs> you need time to dial. <laughs> and, uh, 
lightning That's figure. It's a bit longer, and um, you can, of course, set a couple of more font options here mm -hmm. to get whatever font thing you need. Um, set font family, uh, font stretch, font white. Mm -hmm. um, so we can uh, font stretch. Oh, here, uh, maybe expand it. Uh, better. Uh, so you can put your number uh, and the thing, and then uh, someone can click the phone number field, have maybe a little button here to show it, and then uh, when they click again to hide it, or they click on the number and it hides automatically. So that could be useful. That's extremely useful. Uh... Out of curiosity, is there a way to like temporarily anchor like the stars somewhere into a little layout? Like, oh, I'm like, like if Richard was, ex you know how Richard likes to draw on things? So he like highlights a section in a stream, he stars it, he says, look at this. And then if he moves the layout around it, the star would follow where it was placed. Yeah, we could maybe do that. I was just, I'm just. It's not currently in that. So, mm -hmm. um, what would be for the. Uh... Link to a window also um, could be an idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the first version, basically. So let's see what else do we have. Um, <laughs> so on oh makers yeah events. Uh, so if you use the plugin to mm -hmm. put stuff in uh, in the address book and now this is calendars. So if you need to put something in the calendar, you need permission. This is about asking the user with a dialog box whether they are okay with FileMaker accessing their calendar. Mm -hmm. And uh, since macOS 14, we have more options there. So instead of asking for everything, we can also here just ask for white only access, oh. which is uh, less in invasive. So the so your FileMaker script can't just download all the events from the user's machine and, well, sell them to advertisers, <laughs> if you ever do that. Uh, and write-only permissions is a lower level of access and allows you to add something to the address book without, uh, no, to the calendar, without being able to read all the things. Mm -hmm. And also the authorization function got updated so uh, it should tell you whether you're authorized or not. And so you can use it like this script here. If I'm not allowed, I would ask for it. Otherwise, I would tell the user, we can't export to your calendar because you didn't allow it to us. <laughs> I have quite a few users who have the simple thing that they have appointments in FileMaker and they have this little button, put it on my calendar. Oh. Well, or for a contact, you have this little button, put it on my address book, so I have the contact on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. But you need to get access for that to begin with. That's actually quite nice. So did we get another question? We did. Uh, can you control coordinates for the floating windows? So you're for your Yeah, let's overlays. see. We have a ton of overlay functions. Let's go to the list. So <laughs> they're all new for the next version, yeah. Um, so there is set functions that set frames. So at any time you can change where it is. So you can move it around mm -hmm. um, here uh, by passing in coordinates. And the other possibility is to use a control on the layout. So you could say, I want it to be next to the button. I want it to right of the button. Like if you have a tutorial for your CRM, uh, you could have a walkthrough where the scripts would put little here, little signs next to the, to the button. And then you pass in the control name and maybe here a little DX, DYPS, uh, DY. So a delta, move it a little bit more to the right than the button. Uh, we can decide whether they have shadows, uh, whether they ignore mouse events, which is, but well, if you put in here, uh, Assigned, so click this button. You may not want it to be actually clicked on. Mm -hmm. So it's a script to be run on mouse click. So it's a, okay, that's cool. You can actually also give them a title. So if you have somewhere some other plugin functions from us to list all the windows, um, 
Some other tool listing windows you can actually put that in the title, which is not visible to the user, but it shows up in this debug logs or window lists. Which is useful. Um, if it sets a title, is FileMaker then aware of its existence outside of the MBS plugins? Like so, if I no, do FileMaker window... doesn't know about it. So if you do close window to the title, it's not going to work, which makes sense. I just uh, if I close window, we'll close the FileMaker window. So FileMaker <laughs> doesn't know about it. Got it. People which like is that. sometimes good, sometimes bad. You know, mm -hmm. like if the plugin puts in a, a control on a window. Mm -hmm. And FileMaker changes the layout, then FileMaker will throw away our control. So we have a move function to move the overlay to a new position, or a size function to resize it, or you just set a new frame. You can actually have hidden ones if you want. Like, let's say uh, I create here an MBS overlay and say it's, it's hidden by default. Mm -hmm. So, but I can move to it. And then on mouse enter, like to show up yet. Uh, I can say here it's visible. And when I move out, I can say visible. So you can actually have some screen area which you track for. Uh, hey, why it's not working now? Let's see it. There it is. Let's exit. Set visible. Why doesn't it set visible here? Oh, overlay not for ah, oh, those are variable names. Oh, here, plugin is complaining. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, ah. and now it's gone. So that's strange. Uh, I think it would get a mouse enter if it's. We have to see. Maybe it doesn't work that way. Or was that a Windows thing? Let's try it on Windows. Mm -hmm. So I uh, just exit from it. I can copy our solution, so I don't need to rewrite the script. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm lazy, you know. I don't blame you. So, so let's see. Oops. No, no mouse events if it's invisible. Got Technically, it. so I saw it would work, but maybe it was something more like uh, just don't make it invisible, make it 90% see so. So, and then almost can't see it, and then, but as long as it's technically still there. Uh, okay, so questions are. Can you show, yeah, okay. I think David Angel, he did just show that you could show field content because he added the phone. Yeah, you can show the content of the fields in an overlay, yes. So someone was double checking to make sure that was the case. And then uh, someone wanted to know if there's web direct support. Well, if you tell me how I could get the plugin to send JavaScript to the browser, I would love to do something for web direct. But so far, none of our plugin functions can uh, access the browser or web direct to do something on the user interface. You can just run script server side. Okay. Um, we got new JSON functions. Mm. So if you add something to an array, mm -hmm. you can now use add value, and the plugin will take a look on what you pass and decide what to make from it. So if you pass in a number, it will be a number JSON, and if you pass in a text, it will be a text in JSON. If you pass in a timestamp, it will, I think, be a text. So it's just to so people don't have to call at number or at string; they can just call at value. Got a it. little convenient thing. Makes sense. So anything else we have new? Window list, yeah. Oh, the window list got flags. So instead of just returning your all the IDs, you can now ask it for returning in the names. Oh. And it can filter it to only FileMaker document windows and to only visible windows. Maybe I should just show this. It'd be interesting. Database. Let's just open one here again. 
So if I go to the data viewer, you see I have the data window open. So if I ask here, MBS window list, I will just get a lot of windows. Got it. So you ask yourself, well, what are all these windows? So let's give ask for names. And you see, we have a couple of unnamed windows, which could be overlays. I huh. use my database. This is a data viewer. This is the edit expansion window. There's also a specific calculation window. Where is it? I don't know. Accessibility has something. And there's an auto completion. Right? Auto complete window, which is currently hidden. So you can ask the plugin to uh, show you the names, but you can also just filter by uh, the FileMaker document windows. So you only mm -hmm. get the database windows. Got it. And the four was for for only visible windows. So it doesn't show your hidden windows. Yeah, that's a little list function. Yeah, otherwise, do people have maybe ideas for new functions or? Is there anything you'd like to see? Questions, comments, concerns? This overlay stuff is incredibly cool. Uh, so I am very excited so to fix mess a around with of that. Bugs. So if you are affected by any of the bugs, please uh, update soon. Uh, a few things here. Yeah. Video font mapping. Check. And for smaller scripts, yeah. So maybe we can go, if we still have time, uh, to the Dyna PDF thing. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Some PDF attachments that was fun yesterday. Yes. <laughs> so to repeat it a little bit, a PDF document can have attachments. Mm -hmm. Someone has a feature request. Oh, what, what is it? Uh, or rather, um, you you explaining something request. Old feature, but can you review the renaming the document in a container? So if you have a document in a container, mm -hmm. you want to rename it. Okay. So let's add here a new script step and say it's a set field. Uh, the target field is here. Uh, let's say it's our attachment. Mm -hmm. And we want to rename this. So MBS container rename. You put in the, the old value, which is the old container. Attachment and the new name is maybe test PDF. So, and you see here valid address, it's run it, and now it's test PDF. Sorry, this was a FileMaker document FMP12. And now it's back. <laughs> you notice the size didn't change, the content didn't change, we just changed the file name associated with the container. Yes. There you go, Ken. Yep. Yep. No, Ken's okay. perfect. Thank you. I knew it was there. I just couldn't remember. <laughs> okay. So you can have a PDF as an input. Mm -hmm. You can put in another PDF. Well, let's just take another one for the example so people don't say, see uh, this is a purchase. So let's say we have the make a new one. So it's different than yesterday. Okay. Different. Say add attachment. I just one installation graph. Oh, that's the same. Okay, doesn't matter. So we can make this at mm -hmm. add the attachments. We get a new PDF. We can save it on the desktop, and it's a little bit bigger. And I think I have Adobe Reader on the Windows side. Mm -hmm. So let's drop it here. And Adobe Reader will show me this PDF. And now I got here this. One. What do you name that in English? Um, attachment. No. Oh, paperclip. Yes. Yeah, paperclip. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, it took me a second. So, I was like, attachment? You talk about attachments. No, paperclip. Yeah. Sorry. I understand what you're saying. So um, we have here the attachments. And mm -hmm. within the PDF, the plugin can put in a button. Just put it in a random position. So if you click the button, it will open the PDF. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you can just say here, uh, save it. So you could bundle several PDF documents into one document and send it to someone to read together. 
and your your first PDF could have buttons uh, to link to the other PDFs. Which? And if you ever get a PDF as attachments and you have trouble reading that, mm -hmm. you can use our example to extract the attachments. So let's say we, we delete the record, delete it, make a new record, pop it on our PDF and extract mm -hmm. the attachments and they are still there. And then you can probably export this. Yeah. Also, this is very cool. Thank you. <laughs> so any other MBS question? I don't see any. Uh, people might all have their minds being blown by the potential of overlays. I can think of a lot of yeah. uses for them. Uh, oh, I have a question. Is there a way to add kind of an animation to overlays almost? Like have them slide oh. in instead of kind of fading in? Um, well, technically, you can, of course, just poke them uh, a loop and move it as needed. Oh, there you go. Um, I could, of course, have some animation functions, yeah. We'll see if people people request that. So I got a few more ideas what you could do. You could focus indicator. Like if you don't like the focus dialog from the plugin, <laughs> you could have your artist draw a fancy thing and just show it like a slideshow while your script is exporting maybe a thousand records. <laughs> Uh, you could uh, use it to control media. Like if you're playing a video, you could have uh, it go nearly invisible. And then if you move over, you could show it. And then user could trigger scripts to maybe play, pause the video. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be useful for contact lab or details. Like if you move the mouse over something, mm -hmm. like a graph about a portal, you could show some context help. Or you could draw guiding lines, like when people align things on the screen. Mm -hmm. Can you make a GIF an overlay? That's a good question. <laughs> I need a GIF. Oh, this is a GIF. Okay, can I save it? No, that's a video. I don't know if I have a GIF. Hold on. And okay. I don't even know if it would auto play. Trying to see if I can save one of these is like a hmm. Open link. No, that's a video. Like you're okay. That's a complete video. What about? Oh yeah, this is a uh, oh. gif. So let's just top it. In. So I may need to uh, actually change it a little bit. So no, it it should, but it doesn't doesn't play. So I may need to do something to have the GIF play. That's Maybe a good idea. GIF for overlay. Animation maybe. Animation. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christian. So what's this question about a model window? Yeah, there's a fun idea to just have the overlay be a web viewer and then just load in JavaScript to do whatever you like. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if I think no more questions. Then... I don't see any questions. If you have any comments, questions about the monkey bread plugin, feel free to email uh, Christian Schmitz at support at monkeybread.com. Is that your email address? I believe. Yeah. Uh, and... If you need someone for hire to implement it, you can ask support at RCC Consulting. <laughs> Return support. Uh, seriously, this is fantastic. This is awesome. And if you have ideas, I'm sure Christian Schmitz is always looking for ideas, so you can happily send him an email about that. Thank you so much, Christian. This has been very cool, as always. Always awesome to have you on. I will see all of you guys tomorrow. Yeah, and see you guys next week, uh, yes. where we will integrate some MBS feature in a database. And I think we will just use the starting point. That would be fun. There we go. Have a good one. Bye.
got a report of an individual up here who uh, may be a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 